Okay, so we got that. We've done this. Uh, we already have done this on our machine, so we don't need to worry about this. Uh, we need some stuff. So we open up our package YAML file and uh, on line 23 there, whoops. We need ASIN. Containers, lens. We'll probably have to build lens. Lens, ASIN, MTL, and text. Okay. So we gotta build some stuff, so let that build, and then we'll see if this works. So the other thing I did uh, that I forgot to mention is we got new emotes. So I, I'm going to fully adopt the snail as my, my, I don't know, my emote and savior, I guess. So th this is the purple snail. This is the first one. I have two other snails coming, um, but they're not, they're not here yet. So I can... Uh, so this is one of them so it's like a well, I'll check that out so it's like a, it's an electric snail Th this is the resolution because that's what's required on Twitch um, but the original image is this one um, and then I also made this like weird like I don't know, rainbowy one. So there's there's the purple one, the rainbowy one, and then the the this one. So those are the new emotes for now. Is this the Oh yeah yeah. So uh I need to read that paper, school bus, because uh we're doing pro functors on the next uh, category theory stream, which is next Monday. So I need to read that this weekend, actually. I don't know if we'll end up talking about um, pro Profunctor Optics in this book, but probably. Okay, we're building Lens ASIN. We did it. Okay, now we're done. So we should just be able to go in here and start importing stuff. So... So you can see we're starting to get um, autocomplete finally. Took a little while. Uh, flexible instances. We might stick these into our, um, hey Prods and Altern, how's it going? How's everyone today? That was a weird symbol. So there's something weird about the way this auto completes. Also, I don't know how to fix that either. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a while. It's just I haven't got to it. So um, I'm excited to start doing it. I asked Chris a long time ago if I could work on it. Um, and... I finally have the time to do it. Uh, type families. I'm done learning. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, that was really funny. I really enjoyed it, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke at the moment. Okay, what's the issue here? What is this complaining about?
Did I like miss a character? I don't think so. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So we should be able to import control lens. Um, import control applicative. Import did I get a car? So th this comes from um, the data map comes from containers. I, th I don't know if set is built in or not. Okay. Set is in containers. Thanks, Horlinovich. Also, hello. I don't think I've seen you before. How are you? What is this complaining about? Parse an input error where? Where? What do I have to do? Okay, it's not showing up, so we'll just do a stack ghcid c stack repl. I'm not exactly sure what this error is all about. Um, maybe it's just unhappy. I'm not entirely sure. We'll see here in a second. Okay, it seems fine. I don't, I don't know what it's complaining about. Sorry. So, type signatures. Let's move this over a little bit. You should be able to read. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think doing is a critical part of learning. I completely agree. Um, We'll do some exercises along the way. That's kind of the whole point. Like, the it would be, I think it would be really boring if I did books that did not include exercises on stream. I don't know about anyone else. Okay, so we're going to talk about optics, and I, I don't want to show this text on screen. I just wanted to talk about this on stream, or like I can show this on stream, but I told Chris I wouldn't show them like the book text on stream. So, like, I'll just, um, I'll do a little bit of, you know, paraphrasing in certain cases, but I also don't want to like read directly from the book because that's also boring. So like usually the way I do this, if you're if you're new, is like I'll just kind of do the exercises and then we'll we'll go from there. So this was just like, can we get this thing to run? And you can see now we have like um, some unused language pragmas. So one thing I found out about my editor setup is I had. Uh, in my COC and Vim configuration, um, basically turning these like pop-ups off. So now I have these pop-ups, um, so we can see things like unused language pragmas. Although technically, all of these should be unused language pragmas. So anyway, so I don't know why we this should be chapter one we should probably rename this to chapter two but that's not particularly the easiest thing in the world um so we'll just uh lts 15.4 and then we'll copy chapter one lib source lib chapter two source lib Um, and we also need the stack, no, the, uh, package .yaml. And then we don't, we no longer need chapter one. So th this is like, th it wasn't worth making a chapter one, basically. And then we should be able to stack build this and nothing should happen. Have you seen the Van Larhoven representation? No, I don't even know what that means. Although I have, I did hear, uh, I don't know if anyone knew this, but Chris has been streaming on YouTube. I saw one of his streams. I don't know, I haven't seen another one yet. And he was talking, he mentioned something about Van uh, Larhoven, but that doesn't mean anything to me yet. So I hope... Why is there a chapter one dot cabal? 
Oh, because this probably says not this uh package uh chapter. So basically when you run stack build, it reads that package YAML file and builds a cabal file for you. So you uh, because I called that one chapter one, it made this. And then it was like, wait, I don't know what to build because there's two cabal files in this directory. So you, you, I guess you can only have one cabal file. And we're successfully able to build, so. Okay. Functor F, A, F, B, S, F, T. This is the lens representation actually used in the lens library. I think this is going to be early in the book. Okay, so we'll learn it. We'll learn about it then. Um, so let's see. So optics is a family of tools such as lenses, fold, traversals, prisms, and ISOs. Those are all types of optics. Um, and this is like a, an active field of study. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so we'll have to hopefully learn about it. I think, I mean, Press just linked that, or I'm sorry, Schoolbus just linked that paper. And I know this Profunctor Optics thing has been really cool. So, or people seem really excited about it. I don't know if it's cool. We'd <laughs> I have to read the papers still. Um, where does it say this? Optics are a family of intercomposable combinators for building bidirectional data transformations. Okay, so I can see how that would be really useful. Um, having bidirect, like bidirectional data transformation is going to be um, useful. Comet's lens is not profunctor though. Okay. We'll have to, uh, he, um, <clears throat> there was a mention in here about, um, we will explore the design of other optics libraries, but uh, they were going to use the lens uh, primarily. So hopefully we'll learn some more about, about profunctor optics as well. I don't know. I mean, uh, oh, I guess I could just look at the... So here are the, the chapters. Lenses, polymorphic optics, operators, folds, traversals, indexable structures, prisms, isos, index optics, dealing with type errors, optics and monads, classy lenses, uniplate, I don't know what that means, uh, generic lens, some appendix answers, and a thank you. I wonder if I'm in here. So, nice. So, uh, I did contribute to him working on this book, so uh, my name is actually listed in here, which is really nice. So thanks for that, Chris, if you see this. We're talking about profunctors next week, actually. So uh, we, ha we haven't talked about profunctors in the, the category theory book yet. We actually stopped there last time. We're going to do that next Tuesday. Uh, sorry, next Monday, by the way. Uh, we, we had to cancel this week because there were just too many things going on. Okay. So uh, why do we care about bidirectional bi transformation? Uh, the short answer is they solve a lot of very common data manipulation problems um, using composable, performant, and concise ways. That's useful. So composition. The optic focuses focuses on some subset of data. Yeah, I, so like I've already seen Jappy do some of this optic stuff. So like that kind of makes sense to me and sort of, I think the term optic is pretty useful. Like they always have the, you know, the lenses and you know, you're, you're magnifying onto a piece of something. Um, this means that each optic you learn becomes a member of your growing vocabulary of optics. A little off topic. Uh, did you ever get feedback on stream that made you feel vulnerable? Um, probably. I can't think of something offhand. Um, vulnerable. I can't think of anything offhand, but maybe. Uh, separation of concerns. 
optics are the abstraction most programmers didn't know they needed. Yeah, probably not. You're, you're, you're right. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Concision. Although there are many good reasons to love optics, they have the nice property of being, being very succinct. Uh, succinct is important. Yeah, we'll see how, how it, like what pieces, sort of what things I can solve by knowing optics. I do a lot of data manipulation and I found that like, I, I don't know what the right tools are to do that in Haskell. So maybe these are the right tools. Okay. Hey, Hamza. Yeah, starting a new book. So enforcing interface boundaries. Optics can serve as an external interface, which remains consistent despite changes to your data layer. Yeah, I've heard this term getters and setters before, but I've, I've, I don't think I've ever actually used them. So um, anyway. Principled and mature ecosystems. Uh, optics have been around for a long time. There are a wide variety of libraries available. Do cool. Uh, CoState CoMonad CoAlgebra is the Java member update technology in Haskell. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've heard all of those terms and never together, I suppose. So weaknesses, type errors. Uh, they can spew out some pretty ugly type errors when something goes wrong. Okay. A uh, complex implementation. Okay. A vast collection of combinators. So there's there's too many there's too many optics is that the point I suppose um I've heard of getters and setters probably in an FP context but only because other people have said those terms uh with like around me um but I, I did I would guess FP context yeah what's this oh this is like the the operators. I see. Yeah, and they have like very, I mean, very succinct um, shapes. Oh my goodness! But my understanding is that this all means something. Like the the way these are all shaped means something, and we'll just have to learn what they are, right? Is that that's? I think that's logical. Well, once we learn what these things mean, it should be easier. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, that doesn't. You know, if you saw this in your code. Uh, you would probably be a little scared at first, anyway. So, we'll see. Okay, cool. I'm sure. I Hopefully, hopefully we can use all of them. Uh, since there's a bunch of people watching, a uh, random thought. Uh, Hahamza, thank you for the follow, by the way. Uh, also, I don't know if Chu2 is here, but they followed us two hours ago, which I thought was interesting. If you're here, feel free to say hi, but thank you for the follow as well. A few people this week, too. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll just hop in the REPL because there's a few examples. So we'll just look at... Oh, wait, I don't have I don't have lenses built for these, so they're kind of just examples. Here's what I'll do instead. Uh, we'll put them in here. So as an example, you can say something like view address dot country person okay so yeah oh we're only gonna learn a handful so we'll see okay yeah I, I agree I'm I'm excited about this so I I wish these examples would be a little more useful if they had the data structures and lenses here um, but I think the point with this one is, uh, well, it says it to be fair. It's like, you're going to view a nested 
field of some record, you know, person. So I guess this record is contains a country and an address. It's probably an address that has a country in it, I would guess. So right, we're we're composing left to right. I don't know. Hard to tell. Um, so is this a getter? Is this what people mean when they say getter? Set. Nice. I, I mean, that seems logical. I, I've always used um, accessor. That, that's like the term that I use in my head. Um, this will yield... Uh, a this is not particularly useful but what we're getting there okay nice so like that's a setter so we get a view is a getter and a set is a setter not surprising and then we got something like the following sum of folded to left uh, true left 10 false right pepperoni I don't know why it's pepperoni but okay I'm into it true left 20 okay Yeah, I think the lens is is this bit. Although I don't know where this comes from, it's not obvious to me uh, right at this current second. Um, but maybe it's part of lens. I mean, I guess we can always Google it, right? Um, for whatever reason, that's up there. Google sum of yeah. So I think it's it's a function in lens. So there's it's got this type signature. Oh, okay, okay. I got you. Yeah, we'll probably hopefully we'll learn about this terminology because I, I I don't have the terminology down yet. Okay, so let's see here. So we're we're f is is the idea we're focusing on the lefts, focusing. No, we got to go from left to right. I keep doing this the wrong way. I don't know what folded does, but we're going to. Focus on the second element, so on this, and then focus in on whatever is inside the left. So I guess this does something like returns 30. Yeah, it does. I want to read it from this way. I'm not sure why. I should read it this way. That's kind of the goal. Okay. So this is 30. Uh, let stories short story okay over uh, Traversed, filtered, okay, so we must take ten. Okay, let's see here. Um, not exactly sure what over means here yet, but truncate any stories longer than 10 characters, leaving shorter ones alone. All right, so somehow we're, we're filtering out, we're filtering out things 
that have greater than 10 characters. Is it uh, over does modification, like view? Okay, so it's like, if we wrote view, if we wrote view instead of over, we would just get the, the pieces that are longer than 10, and then we have a modify function. And this is our modify function. I'm trying not to look at the result because that, that's what I want to, you know, I want, I want to think about it before I, before I run it. So this returns this one T enough said. So it, the over only manipulates the ones that are longer than, that, that match the filter criteria. This is a uh, something like this. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Oh, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, what I was going to ask you: Would people be interested in, like, suggesting libraries for? Uh, suggesting libraries via channel points for me to like go over like try and learn them it would have to be a lot because that takes me a lot of time but is that something people would be interested in like you want to learn about this library or you want to talk about this library with me and then we you know you could donate your channel points for that your helices in my case Oh, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Interested. Okay. So I, I changed the, the channel points to... I don't remember exactly... How do I do that in here? I thought I could do that, but I don't remember how it is. Oh, you know what? I think I disabled them. I think that's what's going on here. Hang on. Uh, just a second. Oh no, they're enabled. Can you see them? I'm confused, but okay. All right, so we want to write non lensy solutions to these things. I'm into it. So we need to invent a two records, so we need to invent a um, address record. Okay, good. Yeah, so I don't, I thought I was able to see them in here, but I don't see them for whatever reason. I don't exactly know why. Maybe they're underneath my little, I see like cheering and the they're here? No, I don't know where they went. Anyway, I thought I was able to do it, but I can't see them. Maybe I need to like... Maybe it's... Uh... No, I've never used lens before. Okay, so we'll invent an address type, a record, with fields, uh... We clearly need country, so we'll just have, I'm not gonna, um, country will just be a string. I don't know why, but the new color scheme is bothering my eyes. Like, it's not what I want, but it is what it is. And in here we need an address. Okay. No, yeah, sure. Okay. I, I think it's just different, so it's throwing me off a little bit. And it'll probably it'll probably get um, it'll probably become more obvious uh, here in a little bit. The reason I changed it, by the way, is that the previous color scheme, you wouldn't be able to read these little boxes. So I wanted to um, 
like write something that is a little nicer. So in this case, if we had a view function, we're gonna take a person and return a string. Uh, in this case, because our country is represented by string, and we could write you know view country. Let's call it view country, and it will be something like uh, person. Uh, address equals address um, country equals x. Oh, I don't need this one. I have too many. So you could do like this. That's one option. Um, you could also do I'll comment this one out. Um, we could do person. Uh, we're going to get a person, so we can just do country dot address, I guess. So in this case, I think the the view function looks kind of the same, right? We just we're just composing the. You don't usually create alias for string. We could in this case, right? Like we could just make a country type as well. Um, but I'm just, I'm just waste like trying to make it easier. Not the same. Oh, it composes it the other way. You're right. You're right. It is not the same. Yeah. So that that is how I would write this one. Um, in this case, uh, we can do, actually this one's a, l a little easier, so like set 3 is going to take a A, B, C, and return A, B, D. Yeah, like this this syntax this syntax kind of sucks. And like doing the update would be really hard too because you have to do basically the same thing. So it can be it can be quite quite annoying. Yeah, for setting, right, we would have to do, you know, uh p and then use the record update syntax and then this really long nested thing to update it. So yeah, this syntax is a little rough, but not that bad, I guess. Um, so this is just... What are we going to do? We're going to take this and a bool, and we're going to... This is what you're asking for, right? Uh, Horlanovich. Or I gotta get the cadence right. Um, I would guess this is gonna be something like fmap. Well, we can just do const b fmap t, I think. Oh, right. Oh, sure, that would be fine. Oh, okay. Well, I I, I like I want to read it that way. Horlanovich. So that's I've decided. <laughs> yep, that's what I'm doing. But yeah, this is the same as as the 
um, the hint there. We could just do this. It's a little faster. And then um, this also is just flip. So like, you know, we can go point free for the sake of point free. Um, why do I keep typing that? I don't want to reach that far, apparently. T. Okay. So that's the, uh, oh, so we have a, we have a saying here. If soft, if you've never been here before, which is, uh, point free for the sake of point free, which is like doing point free because you can. So there you go. And usually the way I get to those solutions is by first writing the full solution. And then hlint usually helps me uh, along the way. Okay, so there's that. And I think that this is pretty, this is quite readable. Um, more so than this, for sure. But like, this isn't that hard. Uh, this one is going to be a lot worse, I feel like. But maybe not. Yeah, there's also a, a, like a website. I think it's actually there. The bot you're talking about is using the same thing, the Lambda bot. You can just like paste your code here, and then it will just give you. I think it uses the library that's behind the scenes here as well. Uh, Pointfree.io. We've used this in the past as well. All right, so some of laughs. So we'll start with our list. Uh, I was gonna do this with my mouse. So we're gonna take a list of bool either int string and return an int. This is going to be a folder So if we have a left and an accumulator, we just take Oh, right, right, right. Um, okay, so first we need to take the second, so that's what this would do, and then we can just fold over it. So that sh that should be some of lefts. Something like this. There's probably like some useful stuff we could do here um with point free if we really wanted to, but like this ack is probably unnecessary. Um but it's probably clearer this way. Oh, nice. That could that would be useful as well. Concat left. Hmm. 
Mm. Oh, just laughs. Oh, and then we could just use some. Sure. That would be easy too. So this is like the cheesy solution. Uh, F is obviously a terrible name, but we're not that concerned about it. Um, is it? Press the wrong button. So we could we could use that function. I like that a lot. There's a lot of functions in the standard library that I just don't know about. So like, so if we did F map laughs. Um, that would give us a list of list, and then we should be able to do a uh, concat map, concat map plus. Oh, right. Um, this actually doesn't work. It's, it's actually, um, but then you, you have a triple nested. Yeah, I don't, it's not going to be beautiful. So F map, F map laughs would get us yeah that would be better you're right you're right get the second then some like this much better yeah Yeah, this is like the sort of just cheesy way to do it without using any useful functions like lefts. Ow. Okay. Uh, all right. This one is going to be weird, I feel like. So what is this? Truncate strings list of string to list of string. So what I would like to do, I think, is first to fmap a function where that function will do the following um, s if length s greater than 10 then left s else right s folder G whoops G we'll come up with a better way to do this uh, 
if we can f figure one out, but you know, I'm not exactly sure how we do this. So we're going to do uh, take 10 x uh, ack uh, and actually this is this Uh, see you all turn. Also, Pratz. Later. Fun. Okay, so F takes a string and returns an either string string. Uh, G takes an either string string and returns a list of string. So take, maybe that's not how take is supposed to behave. Um, wait, what? Forget. Oh, sure. Thought it was just. Oh, it, yeah. Take ten. So this is. Is it? Oh, yes, it is. You're, yes, because ack is a string. Ugh. Stupid. Okay, thank you. I'm dumb. We don't want... Ack is a list of strings. Yeah, and we. I would have to put those into a list to use plus plus. Okay. Yes. Uh, apparently I haven't done this in a while. Uh, okay, so we should see if this actually works. Um, so truncate strings with stories. This one, yep, so that's fine. Uh, sum of lefts with list, I think is what it is. So by default, it, it um, is an integer. So we'll just force it to be an int, a string. There you go. Okay, and then obviously these are terrible names, but I'm not that concerned about it. 
we're just trying to prove why these are useful. So I, I feel like I don't exactly know what the traversed piece is here. Although I guess we could just look up filtered and maybe it will be obvious. Filtered. So we're going to end up with an optic PFAA, and I guess we want to flip F and P is probably the idea. Right, because a traversal is, you know, well, it's a flat map. So we're, we're going to embed, well, maybe that's not the way to think about it. Not sure. Oh, I'm looking at filtered. Traver to traverse to plural or er, past tense excuse me um yeah i don't fully understand what's going on here like this type signature is not super obvious to me at the moment. Anyway. Okay, so let's go back here. Yeah, I, I don't know yet. Hopefully we'll learn about it, obviously. So this is like, um, let's change the names here. Rename provider. Interesting. I don't know what that means. Do we have to define a rename provider? I don't know who's, who supports that. Let's see if we can find that out. Rename. Let's see if there's a an issue or something. I I didn't know I had to define this, so this is kind of interesting. Nope. I think I did all of GitHub. Issues. Nah, not useful. Oh well. Okay, we can't rename anymore. That's fine. Um, so what is this function doing? It is... Something like that. Maybe not the best name in the world, but better than it was, I suppose. And this is sort of a truncate function. So what I should have done, and not what I'm doing right now, is done like match the beginning of the white space. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right, for sure. Yeah, this is just how my, my brain ended up at a solution, which is not always the correct one. Hey, Zef Chip. Chris, 
I didn't know that was your name on Twitch. Nice. How are you? Yeah, that's def I th I'm pretty sure that's correct. It looks correct to me anyway. So, uh, Chris, right now we're, we're taking your examples that you gave us for um, the examples of lens being useful and trying to write them in just pure Haskell uh, to see like which ones benefit from using lens the most. And I would say that this truncate strings one is clear, clearly the easiest. Or is clearly the hardest to think about. Like that's that's kind of a funky function. Uh, Horlanovich came, came up with it. I'm going to pronounce it the way I want to pronounce it. I was given per permission. So we're trying to think about like wh what's the hardest one. And like as far as I can see, um, you know this, these two pieces, the two and left kind of flip, and then you have this folded and sum. So these kind of look pretty similar. Um, the set three looks funky, right? Like this is just completely different uh, syntax. Um, and then, you know, country and address for like a, a getter is just flipping the two, the order. So I think that's why I've been wanting to read this a certain way, because when you're, I guess when you're composing these, these in lens world you're kind of thinking you have to think about it a little different because like in haskell you do it this way whereas in lens world you're going to flip them for like a traditional getter so that's going to take some getting used to um i really want to think about just a better way to write this and i think it's really just the way um it's just the way horlinovich wrote it because it's it's a lot simpler this is way more complicated than is necessary. Yeah, like accessors. That that's funny. I actually used that term earlier. Um, That's much cleaner. Not sure why my brain did this in the first place. Yeah, where did this this idea come from? It's like one of them use an either to to encode this. I think of adopting. Um, either types too hard here <laughs> apparently i don't know oh well that's a good point we did use this lefts thing we could have used lefts here i suppose that nah, it would have been weird here though if we wanted to use lefts i don't know for some reason i was like i need a function to map and then i want to fold like, I really wanted to fold is really what was going on. And uh, we don't need a fold here. We just need a map. So I think that's the, the key. For some reason, I was thinking I need a fold, and that's not really true. We're not doing a reduction. So I had to arbitrarily invent a fold. I'm actually going to delete this code because it's stupid. It will confuse people for no reason. Okay, so let's see here. Impractical optics. By the way, Chris, I really like that you you have like sort of the impractical and the um, the drawbacks like right away. It's like this is what it's good for. This is what it's not great. That's really nice because you know nothing is just sunshine and roses all the time. Okay. So here are a few 
of the more arcane and interesting things optics can do. Uh, it's not important that you understand how these work or what they're doing. They're just here to demonstrate the sheer adaptability of optics. Okay, so uh, let's put this in here. We need import numeric. Negated. Um, sum of right 10, left 2, right 20. Okay, so let's try and, let me put this up here. Let's try and think of what this is going to return. Beside. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, um, I, can, I will absolutely do that if it's totally cool with you. I just... Um, Traditionally speaking, I've been hiding the text of the books when they're like paid because I don't want I don't want that to just be end up on YouTube and then people just use the YouTube to read your book instead of like supporting you. But um, if that's cool, then I will just I will just show the book on stream and we can we can read together. Uh, thank you for saying that because that's really helpful. Um, but we got to figure out a good workflow here because I usually just. Don't have them i guess we can just do it like this for now and see how that goes i usually don't write super long lines but some of the text will be uh, hidden i just gotta set it up a little bit better yeah there we go okay so we got beside negated id Yeah, I, I I would agree with you, but uh, yeah, I'm just trying to be as, I guess, it's not really thoughtful. That's not the right term. I, I don't want to violate, you know, anything for you. So beside, I don't have any idea what this means. I'm trying to get an idea of what this is doing without... That means nothing to me right now. <laughs> you said that it probably wouldn't, so that's fine. Um, okay. Beside negated id, fold them, sum them. We get 27. 27. So, like, the, the lefts are being negated and then we're summing them. So the rights are summed, the lefts are negated. That's what this id is doing. It's an operation on the right. This negated is an operation on the left. We fold those, we sum them, we get 27. Interesting. Cool. So beside sort of applies...
Yeah, I don't know if there's an equivalent function. There's probably an equivalent function. I think you just use either. Um, and then you would just... So we can do the same thing. Don't, don't spoil it yet. Let me let me try and write it real quick. You can. We'll see your solution after though. So that technically that is one of the rules below. Oh, by the way, uh, Ancarp, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. If you like what you're watching, feel free to hit that follow button. It, I don't know what it actually does for me, but it makes me feel good on the inside. Thanks, Chris. So now we've had almost all of the authors in the stream at one point of all the books we've done. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so let's stick. So um, I don't know what to call this, so. There's probably not a good a good name for it. We'll just call it that for now. Um, and then we want to basically write uh, some. I don't know. Um, I think it does, but don't quote me on that. Let's let's find out. I don't remember how to do it. Well, here, let's just do this. I think the hlint will squiggle this. Uh, it it doesn't I feel like we had that working at some point but I can't remember I usually just like to write them uh, it helps me quite a bit to, to think about what I'm doing I suppose alright so we need a function that takes an either a b a a and returns an a I guess Um, and it's probably going to be like A to B to C, B to C, either A, B to C. It's just either. Okay. So we want to f map either uh, negate id to c and then some. I think that's right. Yeah. I always forget about this function. It's a very useful function. Nice. So here, Um, some with either. 
that's probably a better name, right? I don't know. Sun with optic. Uh, I don't know how to write the type yet, so let's let's leave it alone. And that's just going to be like this. Uh, okay, just put the type in there. So I, I don't think I can get the type in there automatically, um, but I think what I could do in like this case, if, if I delete this, it should still come, oh well, it's gonna say, Arrow? What does arrow have to do with this? I don't know. It, it's probably just having trouble figuring out what the type is anyway. Um, this one might be better. But I should be able to do something like that and be able to see the type automatically and then I could just copy it out of here, which I've done before. So... Something like that is useful. Like, on all of these things, you, I can pull out the types so you, you can see them. So, kind of useful. I should have used that earlier with the beside, actually. I didn't even need to go to Google. It will just show me. Well, oh boy. Okay, the, that's pretty hard to read. Anyway. All right, what do we got next? Um, import data, data lens by plate. So, it might be, that's a good point. That could be. Maybe if I looked at the actual arrow, it would have been easier. Yeah, that that was a that was a pretty scary looking type. So uh, that's going to take some getting used to for sure. All right, so we're going to have this function. Oh, great. That's good. That's good to know. Hello. 13, 15, 17. Okay. A plate. Okay, it's complaining about integer, so I just need to give it... So it's going to end up with maybe int either something, doesn't ma it doesn't even matter, string string int think right left oh I had the this backwards yeah all right Oh, okay. You see the issue? Dur. There we go. Maybe.
So I need to figure out how to make these bigger clearly. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to do it. But we'll just we'll just look at the error down here. Oh, maybe this needs to be numeric. Wait, I don't think that's true. Oh, that could be. Good call. It's probably, yeah, it's clearly thinking that this is some num A. Yeah, I can see if, so I guess it can do, does this mean that I could nest this even further if I wanted? In practical? Like I could, I don't know, I, like I could put another maybe in here. What's up, Drew? Great. Congratulations. See? All you gotta do is stay with it, and you got it. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's write that. By plate is a wild function. It will find any integer, any int, and we're multiplying it by a hundred. It'll find, okay. I agree with you, Drew. That's, that's, okay, that's really weird. Um, but I see what you're saying, kind of impractical, but there's probably some sort of theoretical thing that makes that biplate really useful, right? Okay, so. Uh-oh, it's begun. Filtered. You see uh, those? That was really cool. I actually haven't noticed that before. Let's let's do that again. Filtered. That's awesome. Tendy for doing hacky things, but it's a bit risky to use in production code. Okay. I have no idea how to do this lens free without defining a new. Yeah, I have no idea how you would do that. I'm not even going to try because um, it would be really hard. <laughs> That's a good, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> but this is actually super useful. Why doesn't it show it for filtered by? It's interesting. Is it too big maybe? That's cool. The color, The colors are fantastic here as well. Anyway, filtered even. Reverse. So maybe this is the, the way to do it is use partial type signatures. And then uh, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a action for this. It would be sweet if there is an action to just make this integer. That would be really cool, actually. I don't know how to do that, um, but that would be neat. Uh, actually, Chris, can you do that in the GHC ID? Uh, add type signatures automatically? I'm just curious.
Okay, in VS Code you can. Yeah, it might be... Um... Oh, that's cool. I, yeah, I think the VS Code implementation for the actual language server, like interop, is a little bit better than in Vim. So that's probably what it is. I mean, there's probably a way to do it. It's just not being exposed correctly or something. It'll get there. Wait, oh, okay, so um, I, I kind of skipped. Sorry, I got distracted and, and stopped looking at this. So this is going to sort the evens in place. Well, uh, reverse. So we should get one, four, one, four, three, two, five. How strange. Um. Weird. That's really cool, though. I, yeah, this seems like amazing. Like when you're doing this kind of data processing, I could see how this would be really, really useful. You can do anything as long as you know which lenses to put together, it seems. Very cool. Uh, okay, I'll make this big. Data list sort. So this reverse sorts the even numbers in place. <laughs> I don't know when you would need to do that. Do these come from some sort of motivated project? Uh, subtle. Thanks so much for the follow. I missed. I'm sorry. I missed it. Or did you just like look at some of these operators and be like, "Yeah, this. I could do something weird with this. Check this out." Okay. Uh, we're getting into the the th weird thing. Prime thing. Norius Horlinovich, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Thanks for your help as well. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of what I expected, Chris. I was just curious. One, two. Okay. This is really fun, though. Like, I like thinking about this. Like I can see how, like even with the inconvenient things, you, you're pointing out some really powerful data manipulation techniques that I could see how I would be able to leverage in other places. Um, not exactly like this, but um, you know, it, it's becoming a little more obvious to me anyway. Traversed. I love partial type signatures. Uh, sure. I forgot how much I love them. So we're sorting a tuple in place. Oh wait, we're sorting... What are we doing? Oh my lord. How weird. <laughs> That's hilarious. Why would you ever need this? You can't possibly do this ever. <laughs> yeah. 
That's so funny. Wow. This is really fun, by the way. I'm having a good time so far. So good, good second chapter. Very good second chapter. Bits lens bit at. <laughs> this is really fun. Like you're showing me some really weird stuff I would have never ever attempted to do in my life. So we're we're we have too many uh, primes. So we're just going to start using underscores because, you know, that, that increases the clarity by a lot. Bit at one, not bit at one. Um, yeah, so that's another case where you need to be clear about the type. Uh, we could have wrapped both like this one and that one in int, and it would have been fine. Hey, Dorman. Uh, been been watching your streams, videos, and stream vods during this quarantine. You're covering amazing topics and books. Thanks for your content. Rarely get to watch the stream since it's really late here. I hope you Thanks so much, Dorman. I really, really appreciate that comment. That's super nice. Um, I'm glad you enjoy them. I, I've been learning a, an absolute enormous amount of things, so um, I appreciate that. Someday I will start working on more practical stuff, but um, maybe the, the VODs you've been see, uh, like seeing recently have been more practical, so like building the, the REST API and stuff has been really fun. So this is another another book i like doing books a lot because it's very structured and i don't need to like i don't need to think very hard about what i need to do it's like you read the book you try stuff and the chat interacts with you so i, I like doing the books because it's it's sort of I, I don't need to plan for this i just use it oh nice to seek the holy grail All right, so we got um, prompts. What is your name? What is your quest? You should do books, Eric. It's really fun. You, although you started doing the the Hellgacker book, haven't you? I actually have that sitting behind me. Ugh. That's a monster of a book. I want to do this on stream, but Eric is actually doing this book on stream. It's not programming related, though. It's well, it is programming, um, but it's it's more associated with chemists. But I really would like to implement a lot from that book as well. Okay. Anyway, the the last one is what is your favorite color? I appreciate the British spelling here. Yeah. I, I when are you streaming, Eric? Because I I have I don't I don't know when to catch you. Do you have a set schedule yet or not? Or have you have you ever? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to even guess the type here, so hopefully it will just work. Um, no, I, I think in this case it makes a lot of sense. I didn't even think about the the Canadian part, um, but you know. We're talking English humor here, so clearly you should use the English spelling. I hadn't noticed any of the other 
English spellings yet. No schedule. Okay. Well, if you if you come up with a set schedule, let me know. I, I I do see. I am following you on Twitter, so if I see it, I'll I'll try and catch it. But um, why can't I spell? Prompt. There we go. Put stir len. Prompt. Sequence get line. I O string string string. Yeah. Technically this is incorrect. I think I'm pretty sure. I think he says blue no way orange oh wait no galahad goes first right so he just says blue and then he goes and then the other guy says blue no way orange something like that anyway it's been a while since i've watched it i need to watch it again apparently either way it's a good reference Although people might think you're a Python programmer. Okay. Uh, I, I enjoyed these examples a lot. They were really fun. Uh, this one, I think, is my favorite. Uh, this is the weirdest thing I would have ever imagined people doing. <laughs> I can't. I, I hope that no one has ever written a function in their life that does something like this. Because <laughs> it would be hard to think about. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's the end of chapter two. Uh, you're going to start streaming at 10? Easy Pete's. That's super late. Okay, uh, before we start chapter three, let's uh, push this code. Uh, I, it's literally in my computer. And then we can probably get rid of some of this stuff anyway. For now, we'll just get rid of this. I think this was the starting code. I should make like a, a stack. Um, template to put this together so i don't have to rewrite this over and over again you know we could like put these in the package yaml as as default extensions and and stick this in here but we'll see okay so chapter three um also that's not what i wanted to do oh well bad habit all right. Okay, to be clear, I'll refer to operations which can be formed on data as actions, whereas the data selectors are the actual optics. Okay, so we have optics and actions. Each type of optic comes with a set of compatible actions. Constraint versus flexibility. So a lens focuses, selects, uh, we used also um, access, I suppose, a single piece of data within a larger structure. I can get behind that. A lens must never fail to get or modify that focus. Lens must never fail to get or modify that focus. Interesting. I mean, I guess that makes sense, otherwise it wouldn't compile. Maybe that's not the right way to think about it, but not sure. Um, these constraints unlock a few actions we can perform on lenses. We can use a lens to view the focus within a structure. We can use a lens to set the focus within a structure. We can use a lens to modify the focus in a, within a structure. 
what's the difference between set and modify? Is this just, does this mean, I assume this means mutate, but we're not supposed to mutate? Or maybe an update? Okay, I can think of it like that. That's fine. It feels, it feels the same, set and modify, but maybe I'm just not thinking about it correctly. Oh, modify is like apply a function to the thing. Never mind. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, set is change it. Modify is apply function to thing. Got it. I'm being silly. Um, okay, so we have a nested tuple. So we get the second thing. We get the first thing. I can't highlight this for some reason. Okay, I can deal with that. No, I, I, I think it's just, I mean, maybe there could be a tiny bit of clarification here. Like, I think view is obvious, but, you know, my brain just wanted to think this, these things are the same. But I know what you mean, it just took me a second to get there. Um, but maybe these will be useful I, if it if you want to watch me do this for 16 hours or whatever. <laughs> it's going to take me a while to get through this book, probably. We always get sidetracked as well, so that's a problem. <laughs> All right, so let's let's try this. Uh, let's just try this in the REPL. Oh wait, I should have stuff open already. Um, So import control lens view focus second focus focus second focus first is probably the best way to say this focus so typically when I read the dot in Haskell I say after but that's not really the case here. The dot means something different. It does. It's no longer after. Um. Because it's more like and then. Like focus, uh, second and then focus first. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so in... Okay. Um, we won't worry about exactly what it's doing or how it works. Yeah. I mean, this is really convenient because it's, you know, it still looks like Haskell. It's just you have to think about the, the dot kind of means something different now. Just a little bit. Okay, so the action is a view. So we have a view action versus a set action versus a modify action. We have some structure that we're trying to focus on. We explain the path we want to focus to, and then the focus is just the result. I hope I said that approximately correctly. Action, st some structure, path to focus. I like the control category version anyway. Does that sort of flip the, the traditional composition operator? I've never used that operator before. I guess I should. Maybe it would be useful. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so it's sort of a little, little backwards. 
Yeah, I've used the um, right, 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 and left, left, left before in Peer Script, but I've never actually used them inside Haskell. I've also never used the category uh, module. Like, there's so many things to learn. There's so many things to learn. And, and I don't use this on a daily basis. That's the problem. If I used it on a daily basis, it would be a lot easier to to remember all of this stuff. But I only do it twice a week. You know, I only I only do Haskell for six hours a week. I'm not sure it's enough. Anyway, okay. The names for these things aren't really standardized yet, so you may have poor luck searching for them. Poor luck searching for them on Google. Okay, so the action trademark. Uh, an action executes some operation over the focus of a path. For example, view is an action which gets the focus of a path from a structure. Actions are often written as infix operators. Uh, for example, percent tilde, uh, caret dot, or even whatever you want to call this something. It probably has a name, uh, or we could come up with a name. Anyway, path indicates which data to focus and where to find it within the structure. Single optic. Okay, the structure is the hunk of data we want to work with. Path selects data. Yep, I can deal with that. This is the result, the focus. Well, for a, for a get, it's the result. Excuse me. Okay, nice. Exercise. For each of the following, identify the action path and structure. Don't worry about understanding how they actually work just yet. If you want a real challenge, uh, try to identify the focus too. Okay, we'll try that. Um, so I can make one suggestion here. It would be really nice if these were numbered because when like when I'm doing these books, um, like the, we know we're in chapter two and like I'm gonna have to write, you know, like exercises, uh, optic anatomy. And maybe this is just in here. So maybe it's not that big of a deal. Okay, I, I see. I, I don't think it's actually a big deal. Never mind. Because you, you just have exercises at the end of most of these sections. So all I have to do is describe the, the section introduction to lenses and then exercises. So exercises, introduction to lenses. Yeah, I think this is this is don't I it would be nice if they were numbered only because it would make my life easier, but I shouldn't I shouldn't uh, complain that much because this is actually fine. I just need to do my structure changes just a tiny bit to try and give people clarity, I guess. Not a lot though. Okay. So, identify action path and structure bonus I see what what actually can I ask what you're using to typeset this I would have guessed it's probably LaTeX but oh, it's literally markdown okay great uh, yeah that doesn't make it easy literally uh, markdown makes it tough because in LaTeX, you would just get it for free. I don't know how you, do, how you would do something like that in Markdown. But I also understand that the majority of human beings have never written uh, LaTeX. Okay, interesting. I only wrote LaTeX because I was forced to, I guess. Although I do really love LaTeX. And I have written one book in LaTeX. It's up there.
I don't know where my dissertation went. It's probably in my office. Okay. Bonus points. You know what? Structure and focus. We're going to modify your exercise a little bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, it would be a lot easier to deal with the like this kind of stuff. Because, I don't know, I assume that you're using something like pigments to to get the coloration here, but maybe not. Okay, oh, that's good. Yeah, if you only have to do like uh, the triple back tick Haskell or something, that, that does save a lot of time. Certain optics, optics allow multiple focuses and some actions accept parameters other than the focus. Some actions accept parameters other than the focus. Okay, let's look at an example. So, yeah, it, I, it looks really nice. I mean, we've, we've done two books from LeanPub slash Lulu and they've been great. So the typesetting is really nice. Okay, so action, view, path, structure, focus. I sort of already saw the answer. That would be a really nice thing if we could maybe hide these. Because doesn't this give me the, well, maybe this doesn't always give me the focus. In this case, it does. Right? The focus in this case is two. Maybe that's not always true, but it might be. I'm unsure. Okay, so set. Ah, can't type. Okay. Action set. Path left structure got to be this and then the focus is old Yeah, okay, so this one, this one clearly, because it's a set action, it's returning the whole thing, whereas obviously a view is going, yeah, okay, you, you said that in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> well, good. I, I think that this, me, this would be the focus here, uh, and then because it's a set operation, we're changing the result from old to new. over taking to worded traversed to upper
Okay, we'll come back to that. I think that the focus is the whole thing. The question is the path. I mean, is this doesn't feel like the path to me, but I'm going to guess it must be. But why am I thinking that? It doesn't feel like these. I feel like it's the right answer, but I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, that's your, that is the, the way to get to your focus. So to get to your focus, you're taking two words. So worded must split into um, words. So a list of, list of string. Sorry, list of string. You're going to take the first two, then you're going to traverse them to end up with a string. Something of string. What's the type of traversed again? Oh, okay, it's an identity. That makes more sense. Okay, I was wondering what the, like, what piece are you, you flipping at the end? But I, I didn't know about identity. Okay, that's interesting. And then this... Bizarre. Only identity in this case because the action is over. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, this will probably make more sense later. Again, you told me not to really think about this, but I kind of, I kind of see what's going on here, right? We're, we're wording this. We're taking the first two. We're traversing. Actually, the focus is just this, isn't it? I don't know how to. We're not actually focusing the two, three piece. We're only focusing the testing one. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna concern myself too much with it. But I, I, I think I was making the the connection traverse to traverse. Um, but yeah, I just didn't know what the the second structure was. I only saw one list structure. Anyway, but I think that the focus is actually testing one. I don't know if I should put that in quotes, but I guess I should. Because that's the part, part we're actually focusing in on to modify. We'll see if these are right. You might tell me if I'm right before that. <clears throat> Each. I'm going to abbreviate.
Oops. Each wait, okay, both go both goes first. Kind of a weird I don't fully understand what this is doing, but again, that's okay. But I think that the focus is correct because otherwise we wouldn't end up with those things put together. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, both means both of the tuples. I just realized the shape. So that's like focusing in on these two pieces, both of them. And each probably means we're focusing on each piece of whatever's in there. So that's probably what that means. Yeah, I, I it took me, like, I wasn't, I was thinking of both as somehow dealing with the lists, but it's not, it's dealing with the tuple. And it, I think if I, I think about the tuple, it makes more sense. Like I noticed that this was, was like that. And that was helpful, I think. But both is about sort of tuples, I would imagine, or probably more generic things that have two, but I don't know what else you has two other than the tuple, so I presume this has something to do with that. Oh, any bifunctor. Sure. That's a good point. Interesting. Okay. I, I can see how this is going to get fun and categorical very quickly. Luckily, we're learning about category theory. Okay, uh, so I think we're, we're pretty good. We're on page 12. Oh, uh, well, yeah. We'll go to the answers and see what we got. Action. View. Path. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, either, um, I can't think of, for whatever reason, I'm blanking on obvious bifunctors at the moment, like other obvious bifunctors, but anyway, I think I get it. Um, yeah, I, I guess the parentheses here are not entirely necessarily. I mean, j just in the sense that, like, if I wrote this, I really mean something like this. Because it's, like, just a section. I'm not sure, but hopefully that's okay. Yeah, so this seems fine. Set. Yep, old, great. Now this is the one I'm hoping I got right. Ooh, I wasn't expecting this. Testing one, two, three. Yep. So the focus is actually testing one. And I assume that that means that the focus of this. Wait, now I'm confused. Is this supposed to be capital? Okay. <laughs> okay. Then I get it. That's good. Well, bad for you, I suppose, but good for me. <laughs> Hmm. 
Do you, uh, is there somewhere I could write this down for you that would make it a little easier? I, I don't know it, if that would help. I don't mind trying to send you stuff like this if I find it. I could just ping you on Twitter if that's easiest. I mean, you're watching right now, but if I find anything else that I'm not 100% sure on, I can do that. Oh, yeah, no, you sent me that before, I think. I think I have that somewhere. Uh, probably in the, our Patreon messages. You, you don't need to send it again, but thank you. Once you mentioned that, I do, I do remember seeing it. Okay, so I, I, think, I think I understand the, the, these. I mean, we're kind of just guessing what these, the focuses are. Um, yeah. Uh, let's remove this space. Yeah, we're we're kind of guess guessing um what the focus is, but that's fine. I mean, we can guess. That's that's good enough. Excuse me. Uh wait, what was it? 12? Yeah. Okay. What time is it? 9:30. Okay, we got some more time still. Okay, so lens actions. Uh, now that we've got a bit of optics vocabulary, we can start learning how it all works. Viewing through lenses. Very first lens in action. Here it is, the underscore one lens. Do, do people just say the first lens? I know that maybe sounds funny, but... Our first lens is literally... Uh, the okay, fair enough. I like I like to think of operators as having names. Like I, I don't know why that helps me a lot, but whenever I encounter a new um, operator, I like to try and say it in English. So anyway, the lens focuses the first slot of a tuple, allowing us to get or set that slot of the tuple without affecting the other. This, the lens prime type has two parameters. The first indicates the type of the structure. The second indicates the type of the focus. Sure, that makes sense. In this case, we can see, okay, I can deal with that. Two, four, third, fourth, etc. What is the largest tuple that you can have? Is it like 16 or something? I suppose I could look it up, but. Okay. Yeah, within reason. 64? I don't remember. Oh, is it? Okay. We could just probably do like. And then interesting. Stupid. I need to. Oh, uh, that's going to give me one. Um, stupid. 62. Yep. It probably would have been easier just to do 26 plus wherever J is in the alphabet, but I'd have to remember where J is in the alphabet. <laughs> I suppose I could have figured that out with, with the Haskell. Anyway. Okay. 
get the path focus from within the structure, view. View 1, view 2, not unexpected. Set. Mm-hmm. We could do over Good. Yeah, I can do that. Maybe, maybe I don't even have the the most current one. Um, C or C something like this. What is it? Import data car. What is the one? Oh, it takes a character, not a string. That's the problem. I'm being silly. We could do we could do this. Could it match expected type? Oh, maybe I'm doing this incorrectly. Modify the focus of a path by running a function over it, altering it in place and leaving the rest of the structure unaltered. Oh, this is A to A. I can't, I can't uh, change it to an integer, I see. So we could do... Oh, I'm reading this. Ah, lens. Lens comes first. I get it. I don't know why. I was, I was reading this as a constraint for some reason. I don't know why. So, in theory, I should be able to do this, I guess. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm being silly. If I would have looked at this, it would have been more obvious, I suppose. But I, I always do this. I read something like this, and then I want to play with it immediately, and I don't want to read any further. Because I, I don't want you to show me. I want to figure it out on my own um, a lot of times. Uh, I, like when I, when I teach people Python, that's how I want them to learn. Like I want them to look at stuff like this and play with it, like look at the failures, but in this case, they weren't good enough for me to figure it out at the, the current time. But uh, yeah, I probably would have realized it eventually, but okay. Here we can see that using set with one replaces the first double slot entirely and over multiplies. Yep. Okay, so we go up here and we have exercise. Let's do, well, it's called exercises, so we'll do that. So this is lens actions. Actions. Lens actions. Find the structure and the
Oh, well, I mean, that's the structure. That's the focus. We'll just make it compile. I don't want to see those later. Okay. Get rid of this. Write the type signature of a lens. Okay. Let's uh this down here like that. The structure. I guess you can just write that. I mean, that's the answer. Um, I suppose we could try to define this one as well, just for fun. So... So view types of each identifier. Hello? There we go. Okay, so over to multiply 10, this returns int. Could I might? Oh, I get it. Okay, you want me to say it in a, a silly Australian accent. Well done. You got me. Oh, this is another one of these stupid issues. We just bind that to int. It should go... Oh, oh, right, right, right. We're modifying a piece of the structure. We're using over. So we're not focusing. We're not setting. We're, we're getting. This is unnecessary. I think. Yeah, okay, cool. So over 
is a modification, so the return type is just false 20 in this case, or the, the value. Right, and we can check it by just doing reload and then h. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, this chapter deals a lot with Haskell records. If you're using lenses in a language other than Haskell, there's likely some direct parallel. Uh, try to draw those parallels while we're doing Haskell, so that's okay. Uh, lenses subsume the accessor pattern. Uh, I'm going to skip anything about object orientation because I, I don't care. I'll make sure there's nothing useful in here. I've never had to write Java in my life or use the accessor pattern. I just assume this is one of those things that you could Google and they would show you like a handful of code to implement the accessor pattern. Uh, I think that, well, I don't know. I think they're just picking languages that have these types of patterns right so like I, th I guess you can implement these in any object oriented language so java python um c sharp yeah they're just getters and setters so um yeah i think you're a c sharp guy if i recall correctly well you write c sharp that doesn't mean you're a c sharp guy Yeah, I've never had to use these things, so uh, it, it, this doesn't, like, I could see how a lot of programmers would connect more heavily to this than I do. Like, I, I've heard these terms before. Um, I know that there are design, like, design patterns and stuff like that, but I sort of ignore them. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm doing fine. Uh, I I'm kind of tired today. Um, really? Oh, I didn't realize that. I I mean, it comes from. I assume it comes from that design patterns book, right? Yeah, I'm kind of tired today, but other than that, it's it's fine. I'm a, I mean, I'm a little tired now as well. Uh, I'm kind of ready to go to bed, honestly. But I want to finish. Yeah, that's actually true. I, I had a lot of fun in the the chapter two. Uh, Chris showed us some really funny thing. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, like I'm pretty sure that you could just Google uh, accessor pattern wiki, and there's probably... I, I mean, one of these probably the one you want data access object i don't know what any of this is it doesn't really mean much to me probably this i don't know it's not important <laughs> i appreciate the formatting by the way what does what does my formatter want to do with this it won't change it i think i think by default, the formatter would do nothing to this. Like if I did it this way, it's not going to change it. It's just going to use kind of the style uh, that I've chosen. It's it's Brittany is the default formatter. I don't know if that changes in GHCID. Okay, so we got a ship record with two fields. Um, name and crew. Okay, so we, we use the underscores to, um, to indicate the field accessors, and then we're going to use, I imagine, name and num crew to identify the lenses. 
we're going to build lenses so we can get set and modify these fields so how do we actually create a lens uh, the lens library provides a lens builder helper function So we're going to define a getter function, a setter function, the structure type, and the focus type. Okay. So before I scroll forward, I'm going to try and write this without looking at the answer. We're going to have a name, and it's going to be, well, that's the result. Right. So we just need to end up with a lens of a ship and a string. Lens, the getter function is name, the setter function will be given a ship and a name, I think, modify the ship such that the name is name. That would be my guess. Compiles, it doesn't mean it's right, but Did you pick S on purpose? Or ship on purpose, I suppose? If you did, that's pretty clever. Okay, note the tick at the end of lens. It's not a typo. When you see type lens suffix with a tick, it means it's a simple optic as opposed to a polymorphic optic, which requires more type parameters. Um, the type signature has only two type variables, S and A. Uh, these are idiomatic names of type variables for structure and focus. When you see S in a lens, think structure. Whenever you see A, think focus. Okay. Let's use the helper to build a lens for num crew. We can just write it, I think. Num crew lens ship int lens num crew ship num ship I don't know what the end result is going to look like, um, but I'm just guessing right now. So just to, you know, make an educated guess. Yeah, so our getter is very simple because it's already defined. So in, in Haskell, whenever you have a, a record type, you automatically get a getter. The I guess the setter is the part where I'm unsure if this is like the the way I'm going to write this, or there's something more clever that I'm unaware of. Okay, yeah, so there's no more clever way to write this. Uh, maybe I could write, like, new num, new name, or something, but uh, I, was, I didn't think there was anything more clever. Okay. You don't even use record fields in Haskell now. I just pattern match and use optics. No. Oh. But I guess that just implies that you always have optics defined. Is there like um some template Haskell that'll do this for you? I assume there is. Yeah, we'll get to that, I'm sure.
Yeah. Like these are obviously going to be very trivial lenses. Um, okay, anyway. So we got exercises. If I could spell. So this will probably be the last exercise I do for the day. Uh, I did start a little bit early. Um, so I, I'd, I'd like to finish a little early as well. Records. This is supposed to be a dash. One. And what section are we in? Lenses and records. Get rid of that. I don't know if there's a quick way to do that. There's probably a keybind to do it, I just don't know what it is. Okay, so the structure and focus of a lens are represented by which characters? Focus. AF. No, A. Structure. S. Okay. Which, I suppose I should number these, maybe? Which two components are required to create a lens? Uh, a getter and a setter? I think. We'll look at the answers. I think that's right. Uh, three, implement the following lens. Uh, we can leave that out. It's fine. Okay, so yeah, I think these are correct. We'll just check real quick. We're on page 18. Structure S, focus A, a getter and a setter. And yep, the only thing we change is we just use the, the inline lambda, which I suppose is probably fine. Um, I think... I don't know. I don't know if there's like some rules for deciding which one of these is better. I'm not sure. I certainly don't know what they are. Oh, there is a back to questions. Nice. I didn't notice that before. That's fantastic. I had I was trying to remember this number, but I don't have to. Okay, so um that's it for today. I I I could see how that would make sense like if you were writing production code, maybe your qualification. Well, if you're writing production code, we're probably just going to use the template Haskell anyway. So, um, because it would be too easy to make a mistake. And, and the template Haskell will hopefully allow you to not make that mistake. Um, all right, so we're just going to commit this working on chapter three. Page 18 uh, at all right. Uh, thanks for the stream. It was fun. great. I'm I'm happy that you're hanging out. That's really awesome. No, not at all. Um, I'm I. So one thing that I'm quite good at is not being nervous about like people here. So I mean, we have two very famous Hasklers in here, and I'm not, uh, you know I'm not terribly nervous about it. I'm a little nervous about it. I mean I, you know, people know who you are, so that's important. Um, and like I look up to you guys for 
you know, when I'm reading your Twitter and stuff like that. So, but it's not, it's, it's not going to cause me to like not work. So that's good. I can focus on getting work done. Um, we're, I think that maybe I've seen enough lenses that the kind of stuff that we did today wasn't all that terribly hard, but we did learn some of the terminology so that when, when people are using that terminology, it should be easier to follow along. Um, and we made decent progress, so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs>